When you want to export from Affinity Photo to an interchange or sharing format, you will typically go to File, Export, and this will export the entire document that you see here. However, you may need to export a specific region of your document, or even specific layers, depending on your workflow. This can be achieved by moving across to the Export Persona, up here. Within this persona, the workspace changes, and now we have the Layers and Slices panels on the right here. We also have the Slice tool selected by default, and with this, we can click-drag to define a region to export, then release the mouse button once we have drawn out the region. At the top left of every slice, you will see the exported resolution, name, export format, and bit depth. We could change the export format here on the Export Options panel. For example, I could switch the preset across to JPEG. On the Slices panel, we can see the slice that we just created. I can double-click into the text here to begin renaming it. I'll call it Asteroids. This top slice here represents the entire document, and its slice name will match the saved file name of the document. Since we don't want to export the whole document, we can disable this over here. We may wish to export each asteroid individually as well. To achieve this, I can move to the Layers panel, and I will select one layer, then hold Shift, whilst I select the bottom layer, and it will select all four. To add individual layers to the selection, you can also hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows, whilst you single-click. Deselecting works the same way, so again, I can hold Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and click on a layer to remove it from the selection. With my four asteroid layers selected, I can click Create Slice down here, and you can see that slices are created using the bounds of the selected layers. The slice names are inherited from the layer names, and the slices default to PNG. PNG is fine for this export, since it can be lossless and supports alpha channel data, meaning we will have transparent backgrounds. I can move across to the Slices panel to configure my export settings. I'll expand Asteroid 1. The settings here allow you to add as many different export formats as you wish, and also let you configure the exported pixel resolution. To add another format, we can click this plus icon, and we might set the additional format to JPEG. Then to remove a format, we can click on this cross icon. We can also add a variation in resolution by clicking the indented plus icon. The drop-down option gives you some practical examples of the expressions you can use. 1x, 2x, and 3x are typically for responsive web imagery, for example. So 2x will export at double the base resolution of the slice, whilst also setting the appropriate DPI value in the metadata. Using a number, followed by W or H, will use the document's current measurement unit and calculate resolution based off the physical size. For example, if you were working in inches and you typed 20 W, the slice would export at the appropriate resolution for 20 inches on the long side based on the document's DPI value. Because this document's measurement unit is in pixels, this would create a very small 20 pixels wide image. Using a number followed by P will export to an explicit pixel resolution. So I could, for example, type 256p to create an exported image that is 256 pixels wide, and the height will be calculated automatically. Finally, if we want non-proportional scaling, we can specify the width and height separately using a comma separator. I might, for example, use 512 W, comma, 512 H, which will create a square aspect ratio image. Now to export this slice, we can click on the icon next to the visibility toggle and choose a folder to export to. I'll create a folder called Slices in my Documents folder, then click Export. Looking at our Export folder, we can see four variants of this asteroid image. We have the asteroid at its placed resolution, then we have the tiny 20 pixels wide version, the 256 pixels wide version, 
and finally the non-proportional 512 pixels in width and height version. Back in Affinity Photo, we will delete the small version export and the non-proportional export. Then we will copy these settings to the other asteroid slices. We can click the Copy Export Setup to Clipboard icon here. Then hold Shift and click to create a selection of the other asteroid slices and click Replace Export Setup from Clipboard. If we expand the other slices, we can see our export formats have now been added. So now we can click Export Slices at the bottom here. Once again, we will choose to export into this slices folder and we will receive a warning because we have existing files from the previous export. You can choose to export only the new files or export generally to overwrite any existing files. In our slices folder, we now have all of the exported versions present. One final option to demonstrate is continuous export, which can be enabled down here once you have performed an initial export to a chosen folder. When this option is enabled, these defined slices will continuously re-export in the background as you work on your document. For example, I could move back to the photo persona and choose to modify the asteroid one layer. I might add a white balance adjustment and clip it into the layer by offering it over the layer text. Then move the white balance and the tint sliders. Back in my slices folder, notice that the asteroid one image has been updated, as well as the image of the four asteroids together. So that was a look at the export persona. Its functionality is very useful for various workflows, including motion graphics, compositing, UI prototyping, and web design. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.